In the Meet the Expert session, we were particularly focused on relapsed Hodgkin lymphoma, and uh, one of the major issues is what do we do with patients who have first-line salvage chemotherapy and don't become PET negative. If you do become PET negative, it's really stri fairly straightforward. The cure rates with an autologous transplant, which is a fairly safe and reasonably well-tolerated procedure, are very high. But if you autograph patients who are PET positive, the cure rates are very low. Now most of us in that situation would switch to a second line salvage treatment to try and get people PET negative and go to an autograft and that's fine if that happens but often it's quite difficult to get people PET negative. Do we then autograft them knowing that they've got a fairly low cure rate or do we abandon that strategy and allograft them knowing that the cure rate is slightly higher with an, with an allogeneic stem cell transplant but the risk of dying of the procedure is substantially higher and the risk of long term complications like graft versus host disease is again higher. Um, and it's a very difficult situation. In the UK, we've generally gone down an allograft route. Uh, the rest of the world generally haven't. They've tended to shy away from allografts in Hodgkin lymphoma. Plus, now we've got novel agents coming in, such as PD-1 inhibitors, which aren't routinely available, but there are clinical trials. They seem to work very well at um, um, giving durable remissions, not usually complete remissions, uh, but durable partial remissions. They may increase the risk of a subsequent uh, allogeneic stem cell transplant by increasing the graft versus host disease risk because they're immunostimulant drugs. Um, so it's really blowing the field wide open, the, uh, the availability of these, or the hopeful availability soon of these novel agents. So that's really what the discussion was focused on. So the US generally has earlier access to novel agents and with the new PD-1 inhibitors and the more durable remissions, there's an increasing sense in the US that patients who have PD-1 inhibitors shouldn't go for an allogeneic transplant. Um, and that's uh, an interesting approach. In the UK and Europe, even with patients on trials for PD-1 inhibitors, we're still keen to offer allogeneic transplants because the follow-up is longest, suggesting that that's a curative approach. Um, so we'll see. I mean, PD-1 inhibitors might be curing people, um, but we just don't know. The follow-up is far too short. Um, but yes, there is definitely a US, Europe, uh, and in particular UK divide. The other thing that the US are very keen on, um, which we struggle with because of access to the drug, is if a patient relapses after an autologous transplant, probably the standard treatment now is brentuximab for dotin. About 30% of people get into a complete remission, and although it's a minority, they can do very well. And recent data um, suggests that about half of those patients never relapse, even if they don't have a stem cell transplant. So what more and more people are doing now, particularly in the US, is not going for an allogeneic stem cell transplant, stopping at eight cycles of brentuximab if they're in a complete remission, and if, if they do relapse, retreating them, and they know there's a fairly high um, chance of getting people back in remission, and then going for an allogeneic transplant. And of course, if they don't relapse, they don't need the transplant. The problem is retreating people in the UK is much more difficult because it's not routinely available. So still in the UK, even if you get a CR, we'll take most people to transplant. But it is certainly challenging our approach, I think, uh, in that fairly rare population group. Well, I mean, most patients with Hodgkin's thankfully are cured with first-line treatment. You're looking at about an 80-85% cure rate for all comers. And there's about 1,500 patients, new patients in the UK each year. So it's a, it is a relatively small group of patients who relapse. The issue is, though, they're nearly always young and fit. Um, so there's a reasonable number of children who have Hodgkin lymphoma. So these are, you know, th these are patients where it's a, a real disaster if the disease do does come back and managing them appropriately is absolutely key. So it's a small patient group, but um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a very important condition to get right. I mean, I guess the take home message is we aim for pet negativity prior to autograph. That's a clear message. Uh, if you can't get there, really, I think the take home message is a careful discussion with the patient. There is no right answer. Some patients feel very strongly they don't want to be subject to an allogeneic transplant because of the short term risks, uh, whereas others are thinking much more long term and are much more ha happy to go down that approach. So I think it is uh, very important at that stage to involve the patient.